Aloha Kako, Hafa Day. Welcome to the Hawaii Book and Music Festival and to this conversation produced for the festival by the University of Hawaii's Better Tomorrow Speaker Series. My name is Craig Santos Paris. I'm a professor of creative writing in the English department at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I would like to first acknowledge the Kanaka Uivi native Hawaiian people of this place, as well as the Aina and Vai of these islands that continue to nourish and sustain us. This event is a Pacific book launch for Living Nations, Living Words, an anthology of First Peoples poetry published by Norton earlier this year. We have the honor of featuring the editor, Joy Harjo, as well as four contributors who have genealogical roots to the Pacific. Nou Ravilla, Lehua Taitano, Brandy Nalani McDougall, and Mahalani Paris Went. Let me first introduce our esteemed guest. Joy Harjo is the 23rd Poet Laureate of the United States and a world-renowned performer and writer of the Muscogee Creek Nation. She is the author of plays, children's books, two memoirs, and nine books of poetry. As a musician, she has produced seven award-winning albums. She has received the Ruth Lilly Prize for Lifetime Achievement from the Poetry Foundation, Guggenheim and NEA Fellowships, and the Academy of American Poets Wallace Stevens Award. She is a chancellor of the Academy of American Poets and the chair of the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation. She lives and is Zooming tonight from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she is a Tulsa Artist Fellow. Can you tell us a little bit about the origins and development of the anthology, as well as how it relates to your other signature projects as Poet Laureate? Well, I, it, it is my signature project, but it started out, uh, every Poet Laureate is different. And some don't do a project and they do a year term. Some, if you take on a project, they do two years and I have a third year because of COVID, not because I'm special. <laughs> That's what I said. But uh, anyway, I decided I wanted to have, you know, a, a map. I'm very interested in maps. And part of that, I've always been interested, but I remember when I was living in Oahu and we had a map on the wall with that was Pacific centered. And it changed everything. I could see. You know, we have stories of the connections with our people, with Hawaiian people, and you could see the whole, there it became very clear. So when I became Poet Laureate, one of the first departments I went to was maps and decided to do a project that would highlight one, that it would show that we are part of the land. And, we part, and I helped picked a map that had no uh, political boundaries political boundaries that were that were instituted, you know, with colonization. So there is no boundary between Mexico and the US. There is no boundary between Canada and the US. There are no state boundaries. There are no false names for rivers and oceans and so on. It's just the map is beautiful earth and water. And I always say sky too, even though you can't see the sky, but you know, there. And so that, that was the map that uh, I chose to uh, put the poets, you know, you see images of the poets and you can hear them speaking about place and, and reading their poems. And I thought that was important. And we had 50, but wound up with 47 poets. But originally I wanted all the poets, <laughs> you know, every poet that we, every indigenous poet we could find on the map, but there's a problem with capacity, you know, with trying to have enough staff. They would still be working on it. <laughs> That's what we, we do. It would be like a 10 or 20 year project. And you know, we didn't have that kind of time or the staff. And so the book came out of that. I thought it was important to have something tangible too. You know, there's the digital, which is cool. And it's accessible. So uh, we also have a uh, teacher's guide coming out. Uh, and it might be out already, but it's a teacher's guide to go along with the maps because these poems could be taught in, uh, you know, in history classes, sociology, all kinds of 
all kinds of classes. Yeah. All right, I am pleased to introduce our first performer. Nou Ravilla is a queer OEV poet and educator. She is an assistant professor of creative writing at UH Manoa and is proud to have taught poetry at Pu'u Hulu Hulu University in the summer of 2019. Her first book of poetry, Ask the Brindled, is forthcoming from Milkweed Editions in fall 2022. Please give a virtual round of applause for Nau. Mahalo Nui Craig and Mahalo Nui Joy. In the introduction to Living Nations, Living Words, Joy Harjo reminds us that poetry is a crossing place. This summer, Haunani K. Trask, a mentor to so many of us Kanaka Oivi, crossed from this world to the next. Her poetry, a record of her scorching fire and the wet breathing green that grows in her wake. Joy, my gratitude is a mile deep for what you and Haunani make possible for native women like me today. And as a gay Hawaiian woman myself, I learned from both you and Haunani how to stand stronger in generative refusal, how to resist erasure. And I remember holding your poem, Joy, the poem I give you back so close to my chest, how your words taught me to choose abundance and release fear. In that poem, you write, I release you, my beautiful and terrible fear. I release you. I am not afraid to be hungry. I am not afraid to be full. I am not afraid to be hated. I am not afraid to be loved to be loved, to be loved fear. I take myself back, fear. You are not my shadow any longer. Joy, you and Haunani cultivated new ground on which poets like me could love and create fearlessly because you love fearlessly your lands and waters, your songs and maps, your elders and descendants. And to Craig and Brandy, you have mentored me over the years, always sharing, never gatekeeping, and your abundance inspires me every day. So in the spirit of abundance, in the spirit of aloha that is inclusive, intergenerational and Aina based, I read my poem, which Joy so generously included in this anthology, Mahalo Nui Loa. I dedicate this reading to my grandmother, Henrietta Laie Kavai Kanana, who is most likely sitting in Waikapu on the island of Maui with my Auntie Millie, my Auntie Karen, and my father, John Henry. Haumea Rivella. Shapeshifters banned, censored, or otherwise shitlisted, aka chosen family poem. The one whose ma'i was stolen as she slept. The one who sold everything to live as bite marks. The one named Mai. My AI. The one raising his scalp like foil from a pan of meat. You know how many pigs I've killed, he asks. And when he says kill, he means it affectionately. Not I killed pigs to feed my blood, but I slept with pigs, my arms hooked around them. When you love what you kill. All right, our second author is Lehua M. Taitano. Familian Cabeza Zan Kuetu is a queer Chamorro writer 
an interdisciplinary artist from Jigo Guahan and co-founder of Art 25, Art in the 25th Century. She is the author of Inside Me, an Island, and A Bell Made of Stones. Please give a round of applause for Lehua. Buenas, Dan, half a day, todos hamdu. Hello, everybody. My name is Lehua. First, I want to extend my gratitude to Joy and all the other beautiful poets who are joining us tonight. Um, I'm happy to be here and to make medicine together. I'm gonna to read two short poems. The first one is a poem that I'd like to dedicate to introverted romantics everywhere. Uh, this is a poem about falling in love with words. It's called Estuary. Something like love found me. I did not tell anyone. Or I did, but the words turned to bird song on my tongue. Her name, when the body cannot contain the heart. An estuary carries letters, lovely script, trailing, sinuous, backlit in blue pulse. The feathered word that hums about us, between us, is unmoored. What we share, roots of the air. My name, the flower, half this, half that. The great sea has set me in motion, set me adrift, moving me like a weed in the brine river. I have the letters. Our names, both exchanged for the sake of our grandmothers. We could not take up their tongues because their song is part of what we have lost. Weeping bloom without. Here's what the letters contain, boats, oceans, currents, moons, flowers, nests, unnamed shades of love. We are soilless too, Tai Tanu. She reached across the map, set a bloom adrift in the surf to wish my healing. In the bed for weeks, my snapped knee, a misshapen breadfruit, I lulled in a lightless chasm all the while willing a string of petals to unfurl from my chest, the longest lay seeking her across oceans. Did it find her? She says my name is everywhere she looks, little red flowers, rarer yellow, both and. Blossoms, street signs, the stars, the ocean, the green, green trees, winged things, flowers, earth, sky, rain, her name is everywhere I close my eye. The upward welling when the heart persists. How can you miss what you've never held? I've seen her pictures, something about her eyes, my last love, her mouth. In dreams I construct a lover of parts. She sees, she sings, but one cannot chance the bird. In dreams, I have everything in my palms, the bird, the pin feather dust, the have not breathing as one. In dreams, I am the flower me, all flush and nectar, the bees humming in my cheeks. Okay, our third poet is Brandy Nalani McDougall, a Kanaka Oevi poet raised on Maui. She is the author of The Salt Wind, Ka Makani Pa'akai, and Finding Meaning, Kauna and Contemporary Hawaiian Literature. She is an Associate Professor of American Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So please give a warm welcome to Brandy. Aloha mai kako. <laughs> mahalo, mahalo to everyone for joining us and uh, mahalo nui loa to joy um, for creating this beautiful anthology that we're all in. Um, I have so much gratitude to you, Joy. Um, your poetry has really touched me and shaped me um, as a poet myself for, for many years now, for most of my life now. Um, I wanted to take this time actually to, to also um, kind of follow, uh, as Noo did, um, sharing a little bit or reading a little bit of a poem that uh, in particular that really touched me. And 
this poem is called When the World as We Knew It Ended. And um, I'm not going to read the entirety of the poem, but just a few of the verses um, before I share my own work that's in um, this amazing anthology, Living Nations, Living Words. Um, anyway, this poem by Joy, When the World as We Knew It Ended, and this is toward you know, toward the end or the, the last few verses. We heard it, the racket in every corner of the world as the hunger for war rose up in those who would steal to be president, to be king or emperor, to own the trees, stones and everything else that moved about the earth, inside the earth and above it. We knew it was coming tasted the winds who gathered intelligence from each leaf and flower, from every mountain, sea, and desert, from every prayer and song, all over this tiny universe floating in the skies of infinite being. And then it was over, this world we had grown to love for its sweet grasses, for the many colored horses and fishes, for the shimmering possibilities while dreaming. But then there were the seeds to plant and the babies who needed milk and comforting. And someone picked up a guitar or ukulele from the rubble and began to sing about the light flutter, the kick beneath the skin of the earth we felt there beneath us, a warm animal, a song being born between the legs of her, a poem. Our final reader is Mahalani Perez Wendt the author of the poetry book, Uluhai Malama, and the co-editor of Ho'olaulea, celebrating 10 years of Pacific writing. She has been published in numerous literary journals and anthologies, and she has also, for many decades, uh, directed an indigenous rights law firm here in Hawaii. Please welcome Mahalani. Thank you, Craig. And, um... Thank you all. If someone wrote such a beautiful point for me, I would be, um, <laughs> would be, I would be crying. I'm just so, so moved by that lovely poem um, that Brandy just shared, and equally touched by all of you. It's such a, a great honor. I wrote a very long poem. Um, that really um, was intended to celebrate and honor the people of East Maui, who for over a century fought for restoration of the streams that fed their uh, lo'ikalo or taro patches. And um, it's, uh, it's really just, um, it, it, it's a very small measure of my, my highest uh, regard and respect for our kua'aina, the people of this land. Um, and it is also a love poem for my husband, although it won't read that way. I just honor him in every way because he led the struggle during his 30 years of his life. So it's a long poem and um, I hope I don't go over long, but I will start with um, some excerpts. The first, uh, Mahi, Mahi Aikalo, Taro Farmer. All his life loving earth, a living harrow waste deep in mud, planting, tilling, trenching, shoveling, plowing, mud to field, gravel to path, stones to bank, yoked no less than animal to plow. A year of this, then hooky eye harvest, shouldering the heavy bags, heaving, lifting, hauling, slogging through acres of taro fields, ancient footpaths, fragile Hawaii wetlands. Swollen feet, hands, torqued elbows, knees, pestilences, infestations, droughts. Year after year, year after year. For love of family, love of ancestors, love of the elder brother, for love of Haloa. Two, Lo'ikalo, taro fields. As far as I could see, their green hearts were laid bare under rains that never ceased falling a much aggrieved sun. The dim glint of it threw upstart clouds, but always the rains, and he was glad for the God's beneficence and the harbingers who coaxed sunlight's bright threads, the Aoku'u, herons. 
hovering then ensconced in pools of watery green expanse, their emanations of light vectoring the same paths trod, the same earth, the same ancient waterways the ancestors walked. He regarded the plants hungrily, so the same green ones whose presentiments were his elder brother, Halo Anakalau Kapalili, vivified, who was born of the gods Wakea and Ho'ohoku Okalani, their union a conflagration of heaven and brightening stars. Their firstborn, the elder brother, stillborn, buried. Ho'ohoku Okalani's tears unceasing until the quickening shimmer of green engraven earth, the unfurling leaves and the risen Haloa, progenitor, his offspring, the stalwart green-hearted ones who followed growing up out of the same earth again and again. He called them koa, warriors, as they hoisted their green banners, forming leaf arbors under sun's radiance, their stems rooted deep, their arbors protecting parents, grandparents, the corm makua, protecting children, grandchildren, oha, the offshoots, suckering, cradling them, millennia of generations turning, returning, ehuli, ehuli, ehuli hoi. I wanted to ask you, Joy, just one last question. Uh, you've worked so hard to uh, include Native Hawaiian and, and other Pacific Islander authors in a lot of the work you've done. And you kind of alluded to it earlier. I'm just curious if you can share with us here the Hawaii Book and Music Festival um, some of your connections that you have uh, to Hawaii and the larger Pacific. Well, where do I start? Um, No'u brought up, of course, beautifully and acknowledged acknowledged Hananike Trask. And she was the first Pacific Islander, you know, the poet from these from these islands that I met and I found a sister with her. And we became friends, we used to write letters to each other. And there was that reading she brought me in at one point, I think it was 92, somewhere around there to perform with uh, Dana Naomi Hall, and the three of us. And that's actually on tape. It's it's you know, it's available somewhere uh, in the archives. And um, there was so I was first brought there, but you know, it's all I've always felt this deep love and connection. And eventually, I I lived there for a while, for about eleven years, and uh, was uh, paddled with nappies a nui nui you know, canoe, you know, canoe club, and then later with Hui Nalu. And I co-wrote with Lurleen, the writer, uh, Lurleen Wailana McGregor, Between the Deep Blue and C Blue Sea and Me, we co-wrote the screenplay and worked again with another incredible uh, giant of a uh, human being, Maratha Mita, uh, consultant. We wrote that screenplay. She was amazing, and I miss her. And I've I will always miss Hanani, Hanani K and Amrata Mita. I remember her coming up to the house and us working on this, this play that, that Lurleen later turned into her novel, Between the Deep Blue Sea and Me. 